For more on this, let's bring in Olivia Eno. She's a policy analyst at the Heritage Foundation's Asian Studies Center and Davis Institute for National Security and Foreign Policy. Olivia, thank you very much. I believe it's, what, 2.05 in the morning there in Tokyo? <laughs> It is very early in the morning. Thank you so much for having me I'm on. I'm glad to have you. Oh, Yasemin Asai. Okay, so you as officials signaled that this would happen for the sake of continuing this diplomatic dance with dictator Kim Jong-un. The U.S. and South Korea, as Ellison just reported, canceling their massive springtime military drills. So, Olivia, how costly is this concession? This is a pretty major concession and frankly the you know relinquishing of continuation of the military exercises is sort of the gift that keeps on giving for North Korea. Of course the president in Singapore um, said that they were going to discontinue exercises. Now we're taking it a step further. It looks like some of these exercises are actually being retired and this affects the long-term capabilities for the U.S. forces who are serving in Korea to be prepared and to have situational awareness for potential conflict on the Korean Peninsula. So I think this is pretty concerning, especially considering that we made no progress at the Hanoi summit just this past week. But now when you consider the smaller scale modified drills that will continue, can you tell us how effective those drills are? Do you, do you have any information on that? Sure. So the smaller scale drills are certainly effective, but they're not going to necessarily be, um, you know, replicating the larger scale military related elements that you would be replica replicating in those larger military exercises. And so I think this is really concerning because if you were to have large scale conflict on the Korean Peninsula, you wouldn't have the U.S. and South Korea really being prepared in a way that we have always said is meant to be a proactive measure. Um, you know, President Trump used the word war games when he described them and discontinued them at Singapore, but I mean, we have always viewed these as preparedness efforts. And since the president has placed such a strong emphasis on building up our military capabilities and has said that he wants to spend more money on shoring up our defense, this seems like a really backwards move in that regard. Meanwhile, the second summit with Kim Jong-un, President Trump walked away from the table without chips to cash in. Was this the right gamble, and what is President Trump's next play? I think we came to the negotiating table in Hanoi too soon. Uh, it, it is clear now that the deal that they discussed in Hanoi was not pre-negotiated and we didn't get what we thought we would get out of it. I think, you know, we are frankly no closer to a denuclearized North Korea today than we were when we left the Singapore summit or even prior to the Singapore summit. And I think what makes this even worse is not only have we not made progress on denuclearization, but the president once again shied away from raising these important human rights issues that represent a broader corpus of our comprehensive policy toward North Korea.